I want to welcome you to our course on servant leadership, what it is and why it's essential, I believe, for Christian leaders. I'm going to assume that you're in a leadership position of some kind with some experience as a leader. I'm going to assume you've done some reading and dialogue around the topic of leadership, and you have a base of knowledge of experience and reading to begin with. And I'm going to assume that the title servant leadership either interests you to either see what it's about or even debunk the seemingly trendy concept uh, about what servant leadership is. But I want to begin with the description of servant leadership as I understand it and build upon it throughout our course. So let's talk about a working description. The foundation for my understanding of servant leadership is the life and teachings of Jesus the Christ. The reason why, one, is I've given my life to him, but two, just observing his leadership, he brought something that didn't exist into established uh, reality. And leadership is starting from one spot and moving people to another. So we're gonna look more closely into Jesus' example and teachings in the next session. But for now, I would describe a servant leader generally as one who serves the mission and leads by serving those on mission with him or her. Cusis and Posner, who you may know by their book, The Leadership Challenge, wrote a second book called Credibility, trying to discover the credibility that a leader needs to lead. And they observe that leadership serves a purpose and those who have made it possible for them to lead. Very similar to my observation. Let's talk about four questions every follower wants answered uh, as they, they come to you, the leader. They wanna know one, why is this adventure or enterprise so important? Why should I invest my time, talent, and treasures in this? <laughs> They're gonna wanna know where are we going or what does this enterprise look like? Third, how do I do what I've signed up to do? And fourth, who can I count on if I get lost, confused, or frustrated, and every follower is going to get lost, confused, or frustrated. I believe the four elements of servant leadership that I've observed in the life and ministry of Jesus answer those four essential questions of the follower. The first one, why is this so important? The answer to the question, why is this so important, is the mission. And we'll come back to Jesus's mission and why that's foundational. But Simon Sinek in his book, Start With Why, says why answers the question, why do I get out of bed? Why should anyone care? And the answer to that is purpose, your cause, belief, or I call mission. The second question, where are we going? The answer to that is vision. And now vision isn't just what will this look like in 10 years, but what does it look like? What, what do you want me to, to, to embrace? For instance, at our school, we equip missional leaders. Well, vision for that mission isn't just what the school looks like in 10 years, but can I point to a missional leader who has been uh, equipped through our theological education in our seminary? So vision isn't just what's way down the road, it's what does this look like? The third question, how do I do what I've signed up to do, is answered by how you equip them, the training, the skills, the values. Jesus did this by his follow me process. So the followers are there because of the mission and vision. Now they wanna know how do I do that? How do I experience this? The fourth question that every follower wants answered is who can I count on if I get lost, confused, or frustrated? The answer is the team. Yes, the leader, but also the team of leaders around him or her. When the early church was lost, confused, and frustrated, they knew to turn to the 12 disciples because they had been with Jesus, they held his words, they knew his deeds, they had instilled his values. And so when, we, when those who follow you wonder, where do I turn? The team 
is the answer. Let's talk about the primary verb of servant leadership. Now, most leadership models revolve around the verb of influence as the primary emphasis of leadership. Matter of fact, some leadership gurus say uh, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. The problem I have with influence is you're trying to get a, a follower to move from here to there. You're influencing them. It really leaves the door open for any method to be used to influence toward action. And I agree that influence occurs in leadership relationships, but I also believe, observing Jesus' life, that the primary verb of servant leadership is to serve. If Jesus is our example, his teachings are our guide, service ranks above influence in his kingdom values. So what do we learn from Jesus about servant leadership? We learn from Jesus that the motive to lead is love, the mode of leadership is service. So to lead like Jesus is to first serve like Jesus, or as Ted Engstrom and Paul Cedar write, implicitly, Jesus is saying that leadership in its very essence is serving. It cannot be otherwise. To lead is to serve, and to serve is to become the servant of those whom one is leading. As we finish this first session on servant leadership, we have a general description of servant leadership. We have the questions those who follow you want answers for. We have provided some answers that I believe we will find in Jesus's and also Paul the Apostle's life and leadership ministry. And we have established the fact that to serve is at the heart of leadership when we follow Jesus. In the next session, we're gonna look specifically at Jesus's mission and his role as the suffering servant leader and how that is a model and direction for us who desire to lead like Jesus. Mm -hmm.